So I'm exploring the idea of doing a second channel and that channel I hope to nurture more than my current beauty makeup channel. And the theme of that one will be trying to conceive and our infertility, fertility struggles. I think I have a lot to say on the subject. I think that's why I feel compelled to perhaps explore the idea of talking more about this family stuff and all of the struggles we've been through over the last several years trying to start a family. There's so much weighing on me. One of the reasons why I'm not making many beauty videos these days or for many months is because my life has been overcome and overwhelmed by the family struggles that we're facing. I have to say I am sad a lot of the time and we have had such a hard go of it that it's hard for me to grab my makeup and come on and talk about products when my mind is in a different place, when my mind is in a sadder place and I'm afraid of just being fake and coming on and talking about things when you guys know I'm sort of suffering on the inside. The centerpiece of my channel has always been this sort of honesty and I've always shared everything with you. I don't want to hold back and just kind of show you a little piece of me like the makeup cami. I've always wanted to share what life is like for me and who I am. That's very important to me and you guys have been so responsive to that and amazing and just really welcoming so that I can share myself with you and you're so gracious and loving. So it would be weird for me to kind of come on and leave out a big piece of my life which is our fertility struggles. That is the reason why I don't post a lot these days because I just feel like it might be a little inauthentic and you'll see right through it that I'm kind of sad beneath the nice sparkly eyeshadow. My eyes are kind of telling a, diff a different story. So anyways, we have done many more cycles over the last year. We just started our sixth round of IVF in the last year and a half. This will be our 12th medically assisted cycle. So we are obviously really tired. My heart is very tired. We just keep going and going and I'm not at all ready to quit. And I'm sure many of you are sitting at home being like, girl, you gotta stop this and like move on, stop trying, stop the IVF. I don't fault you for, for thinking that. I just will share with you though that this is right for me and I absolutely need to keep going. It's extremely important to me. This is the most important thing we will ever do, having children. And I really am not ready yet to give up on having a biological baby with Martin if we can. I'm not at that point yet. Everyone gets to that point where they're ready to kind of stop and say we're done at a different pace. You know, everyone has a different limit. And some women, it's after IUIs or after Clomid. Some of them, it's after one round of IVF. Some of them, it's after 10 rounds. The truth of the matter is you could do 10 rounds of IVF and still not come out with a baby. That's really heartbreaking. And if you're one of those women who've tried and tried and tried or have not been able to do all those things like IVF that I have due to financial reasons or religious reasons, I'm really sorry. And I'm know it must be very heartbreaking. And I'm talking about this freely and openly because there's a lot of just misconceptions about infertility and we all think, oh, IVF, then you're guaranteed a baby. That's just the way to get it. Everyone will do it and everyone comes out with a baby and it's just unfortunately not always reality. The lucky ones do and then there's the unlucky ones who have to keep going and who maybe never get there. And it is probably one of the hardest things too. Sorry, I'm getting a little choked up talking about it. It's very hard to put yourself through the agony of hormone stimulation and all of the injections and all of the doctor's visits and scans and the roller coaster ride of a cycle of IVF and then to have it fail. And we've done that so much and I'm so tired, but I'm also just like, I'm not ready to give up. I'm not even close to ready because I've always wanted this. I've always wanted a baby. I've always wanted to have a baby with Martin, you know, since I realized I fell in love with him. I mean, we were friends for several years before I, before we dated. And then one day it was like that. And I was like, this guy is the father of my babies. We're going to have kids together. And I just love him so much that we have to see what a little combination will turn out to be, you know, a little Martin, a little Cammy, And what, what are those kids going to look like? So it's extremely devastating to worry all the time that you're never going to get that combination or you're never going to get to be a mother and, you know, get pregnant and 
have a baby, but it's extremely important to me and I'm not ready to stop trying. But that said, we also are realistic and we know we're realistic and we know my age and we know that, you know, with each failure, it's not looking any brighter or better. So we're also exploring adoption. And I'm very, very excited about that, actually. I think adoption is a wonderful thing. I've been a fan of it for years, obviously. I've always thought, oh, adoption would be a great thing to do. In Denmark, it's very difficult and there's no domestic adoption. So you have to go on another country's waiting list and you go through all of the screening, of course, the social workers who screen you. And it takes many years. I have friends who've been on the list for almost four years and they still don't have a child. So we are exploring adopting a baby through the U.S. if that's possible. We reached out to an agency in California. We're going to probably have to talk to more. Because we are an international couple, it's a little complicated. But I am an American citizen, and we're hopeful that there might be a birth mom in the U.S. who is in circumstances where she cannot raise a baby and would find a good match in Martin and I raising her child. Our plan has always been to move back to the U.S. after there's a child. We wanted to give birth and have children here and maybe do a year or two in Denmark before going to the U.S., but it may be that we have to move back to the U.S. if we have the possibility of adopting there. So anyways, that's where we are. It's all kind of new, but I love the idea of adoption now. I'm kind of in this place where I'm like, this is it, you know, like someone might choose us and think that we're okay and qualified to be parents. There's this part of adoption that we just love and that is this idea that someone will choose us and that, you know, with adoption nowadays, it's usually done in this open manner. And these birth moms who are not able to raise a child who have to make that excruciating decision to give over the rights of the baby to another couple, I think it's extremely beautiful that they get to choose and that they can screen parents and say who's the right fit, who's the person or the couple that I know will give this kid a good home. And in that way, you kind of feel like it's fate. Like you feel like if someone's going to choose us, then that's the baby we were meant to have. And all of these years of struggles and pain and heartache or for a reason. This is what we were meant to do. We're supposed to raise this baby that comes to us. Don't mean to just cry and be like waterworks here, but it's obviously, you know, a touchy and sensitive subject. And we could be on a path now. And with all of our fertility struggles, we've been taking a few steps forward and then we take three steps back. And our progress has been almost nothing, it feels like, if you're always climbing a mountain and then you fall down to the bottom of the mountain. And now with adoption, we feel like we're going to have to put in a lot of hard work. We're going to have to pay quite a lot of money to everyone, agencies, lawyers. You know, that's why we moved to a cheaper place so that we can save up to afford an adoption. Adoptions around thirty to $40,000 in the U.S. So much money. But it'll be worth it. It's the most important investment we will ever make in our lives. But with adoption, we know that if we do everything the right way, if we do the social work, and get screened and, and make our website to say who we are as a couple, we're going to get somewhere. We're going to make progress. And with the other way, we're not making any progress. We're just in heartache all the time. So I'm very hopeful and I do hope that adoption works out for us. I think it will and I'm really excited about it and I'm happy to share it with you guys. So anyways, that's where we are in our lives. It's been the hardest thing I've ever been through. Trying to start a family has been the greatest sorrow I've ever experienced, but I know it will be worth it. And everyone says that, everyone who comes out on the other side, women who have struggled massively and far greater than I have, always say one thing when they get their child, and that is it will all be worth it. It's the most heart-filling investment we will ever make. So I just have to believe that, and I have to believe that we are not going to surrender here, and that we will get our baby, and we'll be okay. So that's where we are. I'm going to make a new channel about this subject. If you guys have any interest, you can follow that channel. I know not all of you are the target group and might find it extremely boring or just not relevant to your lives, and that's totally fine. That's why I want to do these videos separate from the beauty stuff and the expat stuff that I talk about on my other channel. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and for always being so loving and supportive. I appreciate all of your prayers and kind words. They've always just meant so much to me, and I'm extremely grateful. You guys are such good people. I will talk to you again at some point, hopefully soon. Okay? Bye!